You know, I knew this player was going to be good, but I didn't think he'd be this good, and this quickly, too. Today we're talking about the Minnesota Wild, and I know you could go out there and say, wait a minute, Lego, they lost yesterday, and it was 4-1, too. Vegas just kind of had their way with the Wild, and they ended up getting the loss. What do you want to talk about when it comes to this team? Well, even though the Wild did have themselves a losing showcase yesterday, they've been on a pretty interesting run lately that sees them at the top of that central division, above Colorado and the Dallas Stars. They're 6-2-2 two two in their last 10 games, they've been winning a whole bunch, aside from that loss against the Golden Knights yesterday, they've been on a pretty big heater, and the most interesting part about this recent hot streak is that they've been doing it all without Kirill Kaprizov. Kaprizov had been sidelined for, I think the timeline they said was three to four weeks, with an upper body injury, and unfortunately, a lot of people were like, wait a minute, okay, that's bad. Kirill Kaprizov is the heart and soul of the Minnesota Wilds offense. He is the main guy. He is the pump that keeps things going. He's got 74 points in 65 games played. And if you do the math over there, 74 divvy 65 multiplied out by number 82. He was literally on pace for a 94-point year, and he had 100 points last season too. So I think everybody knows how good Kaprizov has been. But... Without this guy in the lineup, without their most dynamic, offensively potent, and just overall game-changing type of player in their roster, they've still found a way to win. And part of the reason why the Wild have gone on such a hot streak lately is because of the player that we're going to be talking about today, Matt Boldy. You see, when the Vegas Golden Knights beat the Wild 4-1 yesterday, the one goal scored by Minnie was scored by Matt Boldy. And if you go over to Boldy's game log, you could see that in the past 10 games without Kirill Kaprizov over here, Boldy scored himself a goal against the Arizona Coyotes. They lost 5-4 in overtime. He had two assists against the St. Louis Blues, one assist against the Boston Bruins, scored a hat trick against the Washington Capitals, then scored a goal against the New Jersey Devils in overtime. Yeah, that's right. There's an OT winner in there. He also had himself two goals in the 5-4 shootout loss against the Flyers, another hat trick against the Seattle Kraken 5-1 on Monday, and then the one goal yesterday against Vegas. Boldy legitimately has 11 goals and 3 assists in his last 10 games worth of play, including 2 hat-tricks. And the thing about Boldy is, when you watch a lot of these goals go in, these aren't regular tap-in, you know, just garbage type of rebound goals that he's scoring. Nah, these are goals that are coming from maybe 10, 20 feet out, and he's absolutely wiring it on goal. He's getting passes from the guys for one-timers, he's getting passes where he's able to corral the puck and hold onto it for a little bit before whipping it on goal. He's been finding the back of the net with just prime goal score type goals. And it's weird because I didn't really expect him to be capable of doing that, especially at this magnitude, at this young of an age. Matt Boldy is 21 years old. He's in his second NHL season, and already he's got himself 10 goals in 10 games, 11 goals, excuse me, and on the season, he's at 58 total points in 76 games played. 29 goals, 29 assists on pace for 31 and 31. Now, it's interesting because the majority of these goals actually came in the past 10 games worth of play, and even if you want to include the time before Kirill Kaprizov was sidelined, Boldy was already starting to get on a mini heater. It's just now, without Kaprizov in the lineup, they've really needed to rely on him more, and he's done his part in stepping up to the task tenfold. So... For Boldy right here, this gets me thinking about a few things. Firstly, that contract. Boy, oh boy, does that contract look amazing now that Boldy is doing what he's doing, and he is most likely, probably, I think it's a safe bet to assume, he's going to get better as the years go on. I mean, he's already scoring at a 30-goal, 30-assist pace in a full 82-game season, and he is only 21 years old. He is on the first year of that $7 million AAV, or excuse me, he's on the last year of his ELC. My bad. His $7 million AAV deal starts next year, and that goes on till 2030. 
if Matt Boldy is able to go out there next season and continuously score at this sort of a rate, he doesn't even need to get 10 goals in 10 games played. He can just get half a goal a game. If he gets a 40-goal season already, boom, that's worth it. Seven million bucks for that type of guy? Hey, sign me up, especially if he's as young as Boldy is. Secondly, what this gets me thinking about is just the overall style that Boldy plays, because as we have said over the years, Boldy was never really known as that top-tier goal-scoring type of guy on any of the teams that he had played on. When he played on the NTTP, he wasn't the top goal scorer. That was Cole Caulfield. And in fact, you had other players like Jack Hughes, who was the playmaker, Alex Turcotte, who was the workhorse, Zegras, who was the magician. Boldy he was the Swiss Army Knife, and he was the guy that could kind of do it all. Board play, board battles, he could play in his own zone, he could back check, he could create offense when he needed to, but he wasn't the top guy at doing that. That was Hughes and Caulfield and Zegras' job. Boldy just kind of chipped in when he was needed, and he did a pretty good job at doing so. But now it's like, hey, he's playing in a situation where there is no more top guy. Kira Kaprizov's out, and he's gone up to the task and said, hey, okay, we need goals, I got goals, I can score goals for you tenfold, and he's been doing that. It's kind of wild because it's like, wait a minute, why was he not able to do that earlier in his career? Was it really because of the distribution of talent that he had been playing with? Was it really because he was playing with Caulfield and Zegras and Boldy and Turcotte that he, or Boldy, Hughes, excuse me, I mean, was he playing with these guys and because they were all really good, he didn't really need to show off those offensive skills of his? Because now... This is the first real moment of his career where he is the only guy there doing what he is doing, and he's been performing extraordinarily well. Even when he was with Boston College, I mean, he was the top guy, but there were other top guys that were also kind of there doing similar things. Nikita Nestorenko comes to mind, you have Mark McLaughlin as well, and then of course Jack McBain and Newhook playing for Boston College at that same time frame. Boldy was always a top guy, but never the absolute cream of the crop, pinnacle, undisputed top guy. And now he's playing like one. So that's kind of interesting to me. It's very interesting to see the goal scoring side come out of his game more so than we've ever seen it before. And he's looking like a top caliber goal scorer when he puts the puck in the back of the net. He's really calm with the puck. He's not afraid to take his time. If he needs to get the shot off in a hurry, then he can. And he's really accurate with it too. Not to mention the amount of shots that he's taking. It's not like, oh, he's shooting at a super high, unsustainable 30% shooting percentage. Nah. In the month of March, he took 49 shots and had 12 goals. So a 24.5 shooting percentage. Even yesterday against the Vegas Golden Knights. One goal, but he got five shots. 20%. That's not too outrageously high. Sure, it's probably not sustainable over a full 82 game season, but it becomes really easy to understand why he's able to get all the goals that he's been getting when you see the quality of scoring chances that he's getting, where he's receiving these passes, how quickly he's able to fire that shot, how accurate he is in finding the net, how good he is in positioning his body to be in the right place at the right time. Sure, I've been saying this whole time that he's been scoring goal scores type of goals, but he did score a goal or two where he was just kind of the guy in front and it bounced off of him and in. Like, he is finding the right areas, but he's looking like a prime goal scorer in the process. So, for Matt Boldy, this is ultimately what you wanted to see out of this guy. I can't say that I expected this, to be honest, but... If he's able to go out there and carry this level of success to next season, let's say maybe he gets 35 goals at 22 years old in 2023-2024. 35 goals and maybe, let's say, 30 assists, just to be very conservative there. If he gets that, then all of a sudden that 7 million AAV looks like a pretty good bargain when you consider how young he is and how talented he is in this league. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Matt Boldy and the way he's progressed the past few years. Heck, not even the past few years, but the past few weeks ever since Kirill Kaprizov ended up leaving the lineup with that upper body injury. No Kaprizov, no problem, as Matt Boldy says. Thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this. And bye.